koi fish in art. Koi fish were first bred in China. There are now many varieties of koi, which have been exported and bred around the world. In some countries, the koi fish represents good luck and good fortune. Koi fish were originally brown and were grown for food in China. This painting is called Two Carp. It was painted on a fan by Japanese artist Katsushika Hoshikasai. Koi fish became popular in Japan during the 17th century when they were imported from China. Sometimes there would be koi fish that were red or blue in color. Farmers started to selectively breed them. Japanese breeders began developing new varieties of koi with unique patterns and colors. The Japanese created their own style of koi fish paintings. They used bold graphic lines and colors. There are now more than 100 different varieties of koi fish. People love them all over the world. This painting was created by Thanapum Bunapat. He's from Thailand. Koi fish are often kept in outdoor meditation gardens. People like to sit next to the ponds and quietly contemplate their beauty and colors. We now have koi fish that are red, orange, yellow, white, black, and blue. They are like a rainbow. What colors do you see here? Since koi fish now live all over the world, there are many different styles of koi fish paintings. This painting is called Eight Koi Fish Playing with Bubbles by Zyra Zoyabiva. She is an artist in the United States. In this painting, the artist is using warm colors for the fish. Warm colors are colors that make you think of fire or the sun. What are the warm colors? If you thought of yellow, orange, red, pink, you're right. The artist is using cool colors for the water. Cool colors are colors that make you think of water, plants, grass. What are the cool colors? If you thought of green, blue, and purple, you're right. This painting was created by Christy Freeman. She's from the United States. What kind of colors did this artist use for the fish and flowers? Did you guess warm colors? What kind for the water and lily pads? Did you guess cool colors? This kind of flower is called a water lily. You will often find them along with lily pads in koi ponds. Lily flowers come in a variety of colors. They are most often white, pink, or yellow. This painting was created by Michael Kreese. He lives in the United States. Do you notice how many different colors of water lilies and koi fish there are in this painting? It was created by Sarah Morton. She is also from the United States. I hope you find all of these different kinds of koi paintings to be inspiring as you create your own. For today's project, you're going to need a sheet of watercolor paper. You're going to need uh, water-based markers. Uh, these are from the Crayola Big, Big Packs, the classroom packs. That way you get a lot more variety in color. If you just have the regular set, that's okay too. You want the broad line ones though, not the thin line ones. You're also going to need some salt. It could be regular salt, table salt, rock salt, or Epsom salt. A little dish of water. A couple of brushes, maybe one a little bit bigger, one a little smaller. A pencil. And you're going to need a sheet of scratch paper as well, so just an extra little sheet of paper as, um, too. 
So before we begin making art today, I want to go ahead and just actually look at a koi fish. Now this is a side view, but let's look at the different parts of a koi fish. You're going to notice it has its mouth, its eyes, its nostril up on the top of its head. And this is the whole lateral side of it. And if you look at the fins, you're going to see that we have the pectoral fin, the ventral fin, and the anal fin. So there's three fins in the back. The dorsal fin on top, and the caudal fin back here. Now as we go to draw it though, we're not normally looking at this side view. What we're normally looking at is more of a top view. And as you can see, there are so many different varieties as far as their color. But if you start looking at their actual shape, you're going to see that most of them have a rounded front, and then it goes back into a triangular shape. You're going to see some that are a little bit, um, have a little bit more of a wider rounded tummy, and some that are very narrow. Uh, and their fins will pop out a little bit on each side, but you'll notice you're only seeing two of them. The other ones back here are hidden, and the one on top is also difficult to see. Now, as we um, go to draw them, often what will happen is the koi fish will have a twist in it. And this curve actually makes for a really beautiful drawing. So we're going to actually be learning how to draw some twisted koi fish today. And so when you go to put it into a drawing, you're going to see that you can put it in with a curve. You could add in those fins if you want to, if some of them are starting to show. And things are going to get a little bit more organic. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and play with drawing some koi fish today. So we're going to start with our scratch paper today, not our watercolor paper, because we're just going to practice drawing some koi fish. Now as we draw koi fish, uh, let's just go over to one side of our page. It doesn't matter which. These are going to be practice fish. And let's learn how to first just draw a straight one. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make a U shape. And you'll notice I didn't make that too tiny. You'll notice I can fit almost all of my fingers inside of it. Now, and after I have that U, I'm going to drop, I'm going to find the middle of it. I'm going to drop straight back, and I'm going to make a dot. And now from here, I can connect those ends to my dot. And I have the basic body of my koi fish now. I could add a tail by adding in a V. You'll notice I made my V a little bit wavy. Take and put a dot in the middle. And I have a tail now. Actually, a caudal fin. And now we're going to go ahead and add in our pectoral fins so we can come up to the side and make just a shape going back, a triangle shape. So we have some fins happening. There is um, the shape up at the front of the mouth, and it's kind of just a little bit of a wave, almost like you make a couple of little hills. As we add in our eyes, they are oval shapes with another kind of a curve inside of it. So an oval with kind of a U-shape inside of it. That will give you a nice eye. Now if you want spots on your goldfish, you could go ahead and draw in spots, but maybe you don't want them. I'm going to put in a few spots. So that's a koi fish if you want to make one going straight. Now let's try making a koi fish that's curved. Now the curved ones are a little bit more challenging, but you can totally handle it. I'm going to curve mine. I think I'm going to turn my paper this way. I'm going to curve mine coming around this way. So the first thing I need to do is I start with that U shape. So I'm going to take and put my U-shape right here. And remember, it's not too tiny. 
you should be able to fit a minimum of three, maybe actually four fingers inside. My fingers are gonna be bigger than yours. Now this time, for the body, we want it to curve over here. So I go this way, and I'm gonna curve it over, and then I'm gonna put my dot. So wherever I want it to curve to. And now I'm gonna take and put a curve in, and line up over there. And then this one is gonna curve over this way. So now instead of having a straight body, we have a curved body. And we're gonna go ahead and add on our tail. We could do the same thing. I'm gonna make this one a little fancier. However you make your V, the fancier it will be. I put my dot in the middle. I add in some lines. If fins were, fins were a little challenging for you the last time, you can take and make a dot on the side of your fish. And then you draw up and you draw up. And that can give you some fins too. Or you can just kind of freestyle them. I made that one a little big. I could put in that fish shape. And sometimes they do have the little barbels as well. And those are just those, it's almost like whiskers. Fish whiskers are called barbels. I think I'm gonna add some onto both of mine. Add in some eyes. Circles with U's. You could have them have spots or not have spots. It's up to you. If I wanted to keep adding more fish, I could. But those are the two different kinds of fish you could draw. Now, let's go ahead and maybe look at some lily pads. For a lily pad, um, you take and you draw kind of a squished circle. And then you take and you put a dot a little ways in. And you make a V. Now after you make that V, you're gonna erase it out. Kind of like I have a Pac-Man. But my Pac-Man is kind of squishy. I don't want it to be a perfect circle. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna add in some lines. And that gives me a really nice lily pad. Now I could add in another one too, and it could be really nice to overlap them. So I could take and make my squish circle, and it's also kind of fun to make them go off the page. So I've made my squish circle. I put in my little dot. And there I have another lily pad. I could keep adding in lily pads if I want to. Maybe I have some where you can only see part of it. And so I could keep adding and drawing. If I wanted more fish or more lily pads, I could keep working. You could also learn how to make lily pad flowers. And to make a flower, you take and you make kind of a squishy little circle. And then you take and you make a petal. You could add in another petal. And you keep making petals going all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you go between your petals and you add another one. And there we have a flower for a lily pad. Now I can put it onto a lily pad too by putting it onto a squish circle. If I wanted to, I could put a V cut in. It's okay if you go off the page. 
So now I have a flower in a lily pad. So now you've learned how to make two different kinds of fish, different kinds of lily pads, and a lily pad flower. And so what you're going to do now is you're going to use this as your reference page, and you are going to go ahead now and design your own koi fish garden. So go ahead and do your own drawing now. Now, once I have designed my uh, koi fish garden, now I can go ahead and start taking colors in. Now, um, in mine, I'm gonna be using warm colors for my fish and warm colors for my flower, but I'm gonna use cool colors for my lily pad and my background. So I'm gonna start first with my warm colors. So you can think of things like fire, the sun, uh, Anything hot and warm, these would be your warm colors. Now, I think I'm gonna be using mostly orange and yellow today, maybe some red, we'll have to see. So what you're gonna be doing, I'm gonna show you this um, technique with the markers first. You don't have to actually fill in the entire animal. What you're doing is you're gonna be using the markers as a paint. So let me show you with this one. Um, so just watch. So let's say I want to do an orange spot and an orange spot. And I think I'm going to do my tail orange. So I do want to take some color in, but I want to leave um, some white too, and that'll give a little bit more variety. The more marker you put down, the more vibrant your color will be. The less marker you put down, um, you'll get from like a dark into a light. So I think I'm gonna do all of that orange, but I'd like to do the rest in yellow. And I'm leaving a little bit of white in the middle because I want it to be lighter here. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of orange in around my eyes too. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take water in. Now, if I want something to hold, I have to wait to take in my water. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna first take and come in to my actual fish part. And you can see how the paint is starting to move. And you're gonna really be able to see it with this eye. See how the orange just blended in and I got this really nice kind of a fade from one color into the next. And so I'm using these markers like they're watercolor paints. So you can get really delicate colors if you want to. I'm gonna go around my spots because I want them to be solid orange. So see how those colors merge together. And if you want to try it on a piece of scratch paper, you can, but know that it needs to be watercolor paper because it won't work on paper that's not watercolor paper. Now, if you get something that you don't like, you could always take a paper towel and blot it, and that will help pull some of the color off. So you can lighten something if it gets to be too dark for you. And you can see because I put more orange down in my tail how more orange is showing up. Now I'm gonna wait to do my spots because if I do my spots right now, they're gonna blend in with 
um, with my fish, just like the oranges blended here. So I'm gonna wait, and while I wait for that one, I'm gonna go ahead and take color into this one. So I want you to go ahead and um, try to do your fish, and remember if you want a spot to be solid, then you have to wait to do it. So first, just go ahead and take color into your fish. All right, so this one is mostly dry at this point. So I'm gonna come in and do my spots. I'm gonna stay away from that edge. And I'm using just a tiny, tiny bit of water. You see how that's letting that spot to keep a crisp edge. I'm going to wait to do my eyes a little bit later. Now at this point, I can move on to my flower because it's also in warm colors. Now when I go to do my flower, um, I can choose whatever color I want it to be. Often the koi or the flowers on a lily pad are yellow or white or pink. So it's totally your choice what you would like to do for yours. And it's the same thing as you don't have to color it in solid you can take and play with some color. And then we let the water do the work. I like to saturate it a little bit, so not just a little bit of a line, like I like to color it in just a little bit so there's a little bit more paint on there. And with your markers, when you put them away, make sure you hear this click. That way you'll know you've put the lid on all the way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and take my small brush. And brush-wise, you can really use the one that you want the most. I have a tendency to use my small brush for my fish and flowers and my big brush for um, my background. Now, I need to let those dry, and while I let those dry, I can start working on things in my background, or I can come back to it on another day. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna take some color into my lily pads. Now, I'm gonna use cool colors for my lily pads. So remember the cool colors are greens, blues, purples. You can think of things like grass, um, water. You could throw some brown in there too if you wanted to. I think I'm going to play with these three colors for my lily pads. And you might choose to do something different. So once again, you don't have to color them in solid. You can just do it part way. It's up to you. But you want to use enough color so that you do have um, some nice vibrancy in them. So it'll look kind of funny at first, um, but then when you take water into it, let me show you what happens here. And I'm actually gonna use a piece of scratch paper so that I don't have a mess. And I'm gonna start with my light colors first. So I'm gonna start out with my greens and you're gonna see how they blend and move together. And I made some places with my colors really bright, some a little bit softer. I'm waiting to move to go into my brown till the very, very end. So first I'm just doing my greens. And then at the end I'm going to take and activate my browns as well. And that gives me a lily pad. Now, just like um, with the fish, as I go to do these lily pads, I'm gonna wanna do one first and then wait for it to be completely dry and then do the other one. Because if I do them at the same time, they're going to bleed together. And then my colors will get messy and, and then I'm not gonna care for that. So, um, 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this lily pad first because this flower is still drying. So if I take green into here, it's going to bleed into my pink. That has to be completely dry. So I'm gonna do this lily pad. And when, when that one dries, I can do that lily pad. So go ahead and do different lily pads, making sure you leave ones that are drying that are touching side by side. All right, so while I wait for that lily pad to dry, I'm gonna show you how to do water. Now, when I go to do water, um, I'm gonna be going over the edge. So you're gonna to want to put your paper underneath. And we're gonna once again be playing with cool colors. So I like to use these colors for my water. I like to use the different blues and purples. And sometimes I will throw in a little bit of brown or a little bit of green. Um, I like to use a little bit of variety. So I'm gonna use those colors. I'm gonna have my dish of water. And then I'm also gonna need to have my salt with me. And remember, it can be any kind of regular table salt, rock salt, Epsom salt, any of those will work. Don't eat it though, because remember, everyone is touching it. So it's just to use in your art piece. And so as you go to do this, you want to use really bright, full, vibrant color. So you're going to take, and we're going to do just one little section at a time. And you can take and blend a few colors together. And you could play with little bits of brown here and there if you want some areas to be darker. And I don't want to do too big of a section. So about that section is just right. Now I'm going to take my big brush, I'm going to dip into my water, and I'm going to activate this. And you'll notice I'm using enough water so that it's kind of pooling up a little bit. So you want to let the water do the work. If it's really dry and not moving, it means you're not using enough water. So I kind of have like a little lake happening here. And the reason you want it to be a little lake is that's how the colors merge together. And then you're gonna take and sprinkle some salt on it. And if you don't have enough water, the salt won't work. And the salt is gonna um, push the color out and make for some really interesting water texture for you. So I do one section, and then once I finish that section, I can come and do my next section. And I'm gonna be careful as I get close to my fish or my lily pads. I don't need to go right up next to them because I'm gonna let the paint do the work. So once again, I do a small section and I'm actually gonna to move to my small brush now because I'm gonna be moving in and around my face and my lily pad and I wanna make sure we don't run in. And these are totally dry now. So see how I can rub on them and nothing is happening? So now if I take my water up to the edge of my fish, it's not going to bleed. So let me show you what I mean. So I activate my paint and see how I can come right up to the edge of my fish and it doesn't bleed into my fish because my fish is completely dry. And if a little bit does bleed on top, that's not a big deal. It'll just look like there's a little bit of water on top of your Fisher lily pad. And that happens inside of ponds. So if that happens in your drawing, you don't need to worry at all. and I do one little section, and then I take and I sprinkle my salt. The salt has to be put on while it's very wet. That's why we do one little section at a time. You can see how I'm getting really nice, bright, vivid colors here. Now, I want you to go ahead and keep going. As long as the area is dry, you can go ahead and you can do your painting. So I'm noticing that my flower and this lily pad are dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this lily pad now. And since this one has a flower, you'll notice how I'm not going right up next to the flower. I'm gonna use my brush for that because it will be easier to control. Now while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on my water.
Now one of the last things I like to do is take a little bit of brown into my eyes, but I leave a little bit of white as well, so there's a little bit of a highlight. So I like to come in just to the very back of them, add in a little bit of brown, and I'm gonna leave some white in there too. So you can see how I left a lot white. And then I just take my brush, my small one with a tiny bit of water, and I can go ahead and activate that. And I leave a little bit of a highlight in there so it'll make my fish look like it's alive. And those little highlights in the eyes, that's an artist trick. When we leave those little highlights, it will make our creatures look alive. And I could keep adding things to this or I could just be finished and I think I'm, I'm really happy with it. But if I really wanted to, to, I could go in and you know add some little details here and there if I wanted to darken something. Um, one really cool trick you can do is you can take your chunk of paper, your scratch paper, and um, let's say you wanted something, you know, blue, or maybe I wanted a little bit of brown to play with some highlights on my fish. I could go ahead and put some brown down, and then I can dip into it and see how that's going to make paint for me. So then if I wanted to go in, let's say I wanted to, you know, add some some shading in. So if I wanted to get fancy, I could take and add in some shading. And so I do that afterwards. So I just activate on my paper. And I'm kind of just going over where my line marks are. Now, one thing you've got to be careful though is that you don't pull water in from there. Like you really want to make sure your background is dry. So as long as it's dry, you can go ahead and do that layering and then you'll have a lot of control and not pull in your other colors. All right, so there we have our finished koi fish. I hope you enjoyed uh, creating with me today. Thanks for coming, bye-bye.